today in the Earler household. Erica is not here today because she had to take Rufus to the animal ER. He has not had any food in 36 to 48 hours. Uh, he is not interested in food or water, which for the garbage disposal that he normally is, uh, that is not um, uh, normal for him. So um, he has uh, had uh, blood work, uh, they're doing x-rays, and that's all I know at this point. Uh, although I can tell you so far the bill is $935. Erica mentioned that. Um, but anyway, so Erica's not here today. So your uh, worship team is going to be the three amigos over here. Um, and uh, we're going to do our best for you. Yeah, yeah, that's really all you need is Aaron, yeah. Um, he certainly, well, anyway, I won't go there. So uh, in terms of announcements, just a reminder that we are going to be back here tonight at 7 p.m. for our Christmas Eve worship. Hopefully, Erica will be here for that. Uh, but if not, we'll figure something out. Um, and uh, Sheila put this announcement in, and I know why she put this announcement in, and it makes sense that this announcement is here, but it just seems wrong to announce this today. But next Sunday after church, the tree and the greens are going to come down. So let's, let's just file that away. Let's do this first before we think about that. But, you know, I, I understand why it's there. I get it. Um, but it just seems uh, wrong to uh, uh, dwell on that for very long here today. Um, also want to mention that uh, whoever we can gather in terms of the choir and the bell choir for tonight, Erica would like me to run through everything uh, once uh, in, in case she's not able to be here to do it before uh, service this evening. So uh, if we can do that, that would be great. So anything I'm forgetting or neglecting? Okay. Uh, so in terms of our birthdays this week, uh, Derek Ayers, uh, God bless you, sir, his birthday's on Christmas Eve. Um, and uh, Emma McKinnon and Faith Stingley have a birthday on Tuesday, Anna Smith on Friday, and Scott Seeley on Saturday. Happy birthday, sir. I assume that having your birthday in between Christmas and New Year's was kind of a drag when you were a kid, right? There was probably not a lot of celebration. Okay, worked out pretty well. Good. Uh, and then the Carfantas and the Smiths have wedding anniversaries on Tuesday. Um, 42 and 47 years respectively, so uh, God bless you guys if you're also watching online. Okay. All right. So let's go to our first song here this morning, and I'll just say if I appear a little frazzled, now you know why. Um, and so we'll start with Here I Am to Worship, and God bless our worship together this morning. See my 
So far, so good. The congregation will please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, but with you there is forgiveness. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your punishment now and forever. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, uh, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come and help us by your might, that the sins which weigh us down may be quickly lifted by your grace and mercy. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for our next song.
Continue with the readings. Don't mind me. That's all right. I forgot to do that. It's my fault. Okay. But the ark of God dwells in a tent. And Nathan said to the king, Go do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David. Thus says the Lord, Would you build me a house to dwell in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent for my dwelling. In all places where I have moved with all the people of Israel, did I speak a word with any of the judges of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from, the following, from following the sheep, that you should be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them so that they may dwell in their own place and be disturbed no more. And violent men shall afflict them no more as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house, and your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming to you. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And the house of the Lord be blessed. The epistle reading today is from Romans chapter 16. Now to him who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but, now, but has now been disclosed and through the prophetic writings has been made known to all nations, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith. To the only wise God be glory forevermore through Jesus Christ. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this time, the congregation will please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be called Great, and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We continue with the, uh, the, the creed as we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, the third day he rose again according to sent it into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. The congregation may be seated for our next song.
I bring an offering of worship to my King. No one on earth deserves the praises that I sing. Jesus, may you receive the honor that you're due. Oh Lord, I bring an offering. I bring an offering to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The text for your sermon here this morning, the biblical basis for our thoughts together here today, are the words of the epistle reading, which Mary read a few moments ago. Romans chapter 16, beginning with verse 25. Died an hour early. Here we go. Okay. Okay. Other people will testify. It's warm up here. Okay. All right. So do you like a good mystery? Based on the bestseller lists, a lot of people do seem to like mysteries. And when you look at the most popular shows on TV these days, like all the NCISs, and there's like 27, I'm waiting for the to see N NCIS prior Oklahoma. I'm, I'm waiting for that because they're, they're pretty much everywhere else. Uh, so whether it's NCIS or the FBI's, I think there's three of those, uh, we see that Hollywood thinks a lot of you like a good mystery as well. I must tell you, when I was growing up, the biggest mystery I had to deal with was trying to figure out what was in the Salisbury steak, the mystery meat, at the West Bend East High School cafeteria. Thank you, Trey. <laughs> I never did have that Salisbury steak. I wasn't going to go there. And I do have to, one quick digression here. I have to tell you, and my brother will testify to this. At the University of Wisconsin, in the cafeteria in the, for the complex that, that I lived in and that Scott lived in, because there were lots of dorms in, in Madison, uh, the menu was always very clear. It would say cheeseburgers, spaghetti, and meatballs. But when it was meatloaf, it didn't just say meatloaf. It said savory meatloaf. And, when, and for that reason, I never tried it because I figured that extra word, they're trying to hide something there, and I didn't know what they were grinding up in there, and I didn't want to find out, okay? Anyway. It will also seem that God likes a good mystery. And one of the things this season of Advent reveals to us and reminds us is that for thousands of years, literally, people wondered how God was going to save his people from their sins. A mystery first presented to Adam and Eve was not fully revealed until Jesus was born some 4,000 years later. So today we're going to wrap up the season of Advent and our discussion of the stir-up colics as this morning we're reminded of how God can stir up a mystery. So as you're aware, the season of Advent we have used as the inspiration for these sermons, uh, these prayers we use in Advent that begin with the words, stir up. And these are some of the oldest prayers we have in the church, as I've told you. Now, our text from Paul's letter to the Romans reminds us that for a long time, how God was going to save his people was a mystery. 
The thing we're going to think about this last morning of Advent is we want to renew that sense of mystery in what God was about to do that first Christmas. Because for four millennia, people were wondering how God's plan was going to unfold as it finally did in Bethlehem. Now for many of us, this is old news. It's not a mystery how we are saved because we were told from the time we were very little, most of us anyway, of how Jesus was born and lived and died and rose again. But we may forget that for a very long time, people didn't know how God was going to do this. They saw it as a mystery. Now, God planned our salvation from the beginning when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. God said to them before they were on their way, He said, I will bring a Savior. That's Genesis 3.15. I'll put enmity between you and the woman, that verse. Okay. He didn't give any details. He just said, I will bring a Savior. And over the years, God slowly revealed some of the details, the mystery to His people. Because the prophets would receive a, a nugget here, a clue there. And Isaiah was told the Savior would be born of a virgin. Micah was told he'd be born in Bethlehem. But for God's people, the nuts and bolts of it, the details, continued to be a mystery until finally God revealed the plan in detail to Mary when the angel told her to name her son Jesus for he would save his people from their sins. And of course, that is the gospel reading today. Now again, it is important for us to note that for a very long time, God's people had to wait for this to be revealed. And then when it did happen, God did not use flash and splash. He didn't use glitz and glamour. It was not on worldwide TV. It wasn't broadcast live. It didn't stream over the Internet. God didn't hire a publicist. He didn't go on The View or The Tonight Show to plug his plan. God has a different way of doing things. God's idea of power and might, words we find in the Stir of Prayer today, God's idea of power and might was to send his son to be born in a barn and that his first cradle was a tub full of hay, a tub full of cow food. That was the first earthly throne of the king of the universe. Now something else our text today reminds us is that God has a lot more wisdom than we do I've heard stand-up comedians and other people you know, mock the whole idea that this was God's plan of salvation with the, the manger and the cross and everything. And there are people out there who think that the idea that God would save us this way is, is that's just not how he'd do it. But God's wisdom is different than ours. It's better than ours. In wisdom, he shows that he alone is the author of salvation. We are not saved by what we do. We're saved by what Jesus did and does and what God did and does. Okay? We're saved by God's grace and mercy. Two more words found in our stir of prayer today. Our works do not save us. Our works can demonstrate a living, a living act of faith, but in wisdom, God used the manger, the cross, which a lot of people think is foolish. Just as we see the beginning of Jesus' ministry in a lowly state, or a mooly state, if you will. Remember the uh, way in a manger, the cattle are lowing, the... Okay, that... All right. I didn't think this was going to work, but I took a shot. Okay. So anyway, just as we see Jesus' ministry in a lowly state beginning that way, We see the completion of Jesus' ministry on a cross, Good Friday, and also an empty tomb. Not the way we would have planned it, right? But it is the way God chose to do it. In wisdom, he confounded the wise of the world with Jesus' resurrection. And most everyone who saw Jesus on the cross there with the sword stuck into his side, they thought it was over. But God knew it wasn't over by a long shot. And in wisdom, he used preaching to show us salvation 
and obedience. So whether it's by the prophets of the Old Testament, the apostles of the Gospels, or by the ministers today, God's plan of salvation and His Word are made known among all nations. So in this year, 2023, soon to be 2024, it's no longer a mystery to figure out how God is going to save us. He did it. We know it. It's in the Bible. No mystery there. The the Scriptures testify with power and wisdom and mercy and grace that God sent His Son Jesus to die and rise for us. So that's not the mystery today. It's important, as I said earlier, that we remember that mystery, that we maybe rekindle that mystery today, but we know it's not. We know what's going on here. So now the mystery is not how God is going to save us. The real mystery is why God wants to save us. Because we don't deserve it. We're not entitled to it. We're not so much more wonderful than the other people around us. So why? Why did God want to save us? Well, to answer this question first, I want to tell you a story. This is not a joke. It's a story. This happened. Okay? We go back to World War II. It's Christmas morning. There is an American soldier who... Uh, has finished his sentry duty on base, and in years past, he'd always gone to his home church on Christmas Day, but now outside of London, that was not going to be possible. So he was feeling lonely. He was feeling the hollowness of the holiday, uh, and he knew that his holiday longings would go unfulfilled because he was not able to see his family. And so he and some buddies walked down the road that led to the city. And a quick aside here, I don't know how many of you realize this uh, or have noted this, but when it comes to the pop songs of Christmas, the best ones are predominantly from World War II. Like I'll Be Home for Christmas, for example, was a World War II song. Okay? And when I talk about the good pop songs of the holidays, Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer is not on that list, Okay, just so we're clear. Uh, and uh, neither is all I want for Christmas is you. i got to say that in, 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 uh, in honor of Erica here because she cannot stand that song. So anyway, back to our soldier in World War II. So he and his buddies are going down the street, and they soon came to an old gray building, and carved above the main entrance were these words, Queen Anne's Orphanage. And so the soldiers having nothing better to do, decided to find out what the kids were doing for Christmas, and they knocked on the door. And a lady came and opened it up, and she explained that the children there were war orphans whose parents had been killed in the bombings of London, which we today call the Blitz. So every kid in there was an orphan, and every one, their parents had been killed very recently in the bombings of London. Okay. So it was still early in the morning, the children were just climbing out of their beds, and the soldiers noticed immediately there was no Christmas tree, there were no presents to be seen anywhere, and so they went around the room wishing the children a Merry Christmas and offering whatever gifts they could find in their pockets. A stick of chewing gum, a piece of candy, a nickel or a dime, a pencil, a pocket knife, a good luck charm, that sort of stuff. And so this soldier that we're talking about noticed that there was a little guy standing off alone in the corner. And he also noticed that this child looked a lot like his nephew back home. And so the soldier went to him and asked, little guy, what do you want for Christmas? And the kid replied, without hesitation, can I just have a hug? And with tears in his eyes, the soldier picked up the boy held him close in his arms, and nestled him there. And what had become for that soldier as his worst and most forgettable Christmas became one of the best and most memorable. But now we come to the real moral of our story, which happened. But why does God want to save us? Well, as that soldier showed love to that little orphan, 
and held him in his arms. The reason God wants to save you is that he loves you, and he wants to hold you in his arms, if you know what I mean. It's no mystery. Jesus entered our world with a body from Mary and a heart from heaven, and from that heart would come all the self-giving love a world desperately needs, and that body would not be spared the cost of giving it. God loves you and did everything to save you by the birth, life, death, and resurrection of his son Jesus. That is what we remember this morning, that is what we'll remember tonight, and that is what we as Christians should remember every day. God sent Jesus because he so loved the world. And so now that I have reminded, of that, reminded you of that here this morning, we can boldly pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come and help us by your might, that the sins which weigh us down may be quickly lifted by your grace and mercy. In the name of Jesus, amen. May the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding may keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Heavenly Father, please bless and receive these gifts which we give back to you from that which you have first given to us. Amen. We now stand for the prayers and petitions of our congregation. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Lord our God, nothing is impossible with you. Grant us faith to believe your word and follow the example of your servant Mary to receive the miraculous gift of your son, our Emmanuel. Lord, in your mercy. Eternal God, your word has been sent forth into the world to the joy and edification of your holy people. Encourage comfort and strengthen all who hear it. Grant faith to those who do not know you, both here and abroad, that all people may know your name and praise your goodness. By the power of the Holy Spirit, fill all who hear your word with joy and peace in believing. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, our God, bless Matthew, our synod president, David, our district president, and Ron, our circuit visitor, that like the angel Gabriel, they may be faithful messengers of your good news. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, our God, let your favor rest upon all pregnant women and mothers of young children, that they may rejoice in the blessing of new life you give. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of lords, by the reign of your Son, you govern all things in heaven and earth. Raise up true Davids among us to govern our land in faithfulness and in humble strength to do your will. Protect our troops, including Thomas, Matthew, Evan, and Cannon, Chris, Maya, John, and Ben, Debbie, Seth, Christian, and Jacob, Jonathan, Nick, Hyojin, Preston, and Tyler. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, our God, uphold all who suffer in mind or body. We pray especially for those who are printed on our bulletin insert here this morning. We add to that list Christine Williams, who is having surgery later this week. And we take a moment now and pray silently in our hearts for all those that we know to be in need of your grace and healing today. Give them the knowledge of Christ, their Emmanuel, who is with them in their trials. Grant them health and healing in accord with your perfect will. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, our God, give us joy that as surely as your Son was conceived in blessed Mary at your word, so he comes to abide in us also at your word in the blessed sacrament. Lord, in your mercy. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you've had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. 
In your boundless mercy, you sent your servant, John the Baptist, to proclaim that in Christ the kingdom of heaven draws near. With thankful hearts we pray, come Lord Jesus, confident that in his body and blood, given us to eat and drink, we receive the forgiveness of sins, and so proclaim his death until he comes again in glory. Hear us as we pray in his name, and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. The feast of the Lord is prepared for the people of the Lord. Come to the feast.
we pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. We remain standing for our closing song, Our God. people said? Well, I thank you very much for joining us uh, here this morning. If you are wondering, I have not received any further word from Erica regarding Rufus. Um, But anyway, I hope you'll join us here again tonight at 7 o'clock for our Christmas Eve service. If you're involved in the music tonight, we would like to do a run through here if we can. Otherwise, God be with you and bless you this day and this week.